Welcome to Stories of Hope. I'm Christine Hotchkiss. Each week, I bring you stories that will inspire you, educate you, and give you hope. I want to thank my studio sponsor, The Motivated Mind Group, based right here in downtown Chandler. They are your global creative agency. Today, my guest is Elena Zajac, and I had the privilege of seeing a documentary back in October, and then again this year, January, at a film festival, and the documentary was about Lyme disease, something that we don't talk about much and I think we know very little about. Please help me welcome my guest today, Elena Zajac. Welcome. Hi, Christine. Thank you so much for having yes. me on your show. And I forgot to mention the name of the movie is The Monster Inside Me. I wouldn't have never yes. thought that it sounds scary and I'm sure it was. Before we get started, please tell me who's responsible for this documentary. We want to make sure they get recognition just as much as you are sitting sure, here. Sure, absolutely. The film is an independent documentary and it was created by Bosch Films in um, conjunction with Create Productions. And we are an independent um, entity and can be found at themonsterinsideme.com. And um, we self-distributed, so there's no big Hollywood behind us at this point. Um, and Tony Silva is our director, and Francis Cecilia is our main star, and Ryan Riker is one of our executive producers, along with Paul Cho and Har Hill Harper. Wonderful, and they are great people at that. So the Sholo Pine Top Film Festival in October of last year is where I first was exposed to this movie. And then you guys came to here in Chandler, and I saw it at the Chandler International Film Festival, and I was like, okay, I gotta grab you guys this time. <laughs> and But you don't live here in Arizona. They do, no. but you don't. Exactly, exactly. I call Arizona my home away from home. I do have family out there, um, but Bosch Productions is based out of Phoenix, and I live in Connecticut, and it's kind of a neat story how we got connected. <laughs> Wonderful. So now I want you to actually tell us more about what really, you know, you gave, it's the title, The Monster Inside Me, and we really don't know a whole lot about Lyme disease. I did, I will tell you, have another guest uh, last year, and I think that each journey is different when it comes to everything that we encounter. And Lyme disease has got very, it has very little information. So start us with how you found out you even had Lyme disease? Because I understand it's something that's very hard to diagnose. It is, it is. It's very much a misnomer that it's easy to diagnose and easy to treat. It's absolutely the opposite. Lyme disease is a combination of illnesses. There is just plain Lyme disease, but your chances of contracting just Lyme and nothing else are very, very small. And because the Lyme usually comes along with a lot of co-infections, and it comes from the bite of a tick or some other insect, they have found Lyme in mosquitoes, and they've also found other co-infections in spiders. There's no deep confirmation yet about those other vectors, but we know for sure that ticks carry these pathogens. So it's really hard to get diagnosed because the symptoms of Lyme disease and co-infections and all of this stuff when it's put together are very vague. They can mimic over 300 other illnesses and very often things that are autoimmune or things that contribute to daily life that you can find a reason for. Um, so people don't know that they need to be checked for this. They just think that it's part of their aging process oftentimes because the symptoms are so vague. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a very misunderstood and misdiagnosed illness out there. You just said over 300. My mind just went, wow, how, do you, <laughs> how would you narrow it down? So you already said that the original origin is from an insect, the tick. You said that um, a mosquito could possibly have it too. Where is it that you actually realized that you had something going on that wasn't a normal <laughs> of this 300 that they had to narrow it down to this? Well, that is really an interesting question because it took me over 20 years to be properly diagnosed and then an additional nine years to treat it to the point of remission so that I could be a functional human being and part of society again. Um, and it's a lot of it's because there's not a lot of information out there and the tests are not reliable. 
and I live in New England. I'm from Connecticut. Um, I've lived here my whole entire life, although I've traveled all, almost around the world. Um, and ticks are found in every continent, and we have a global society. So to say that there's only Lyme disease in one part of the world is absolutely a lie because it travels, it hitchhikes. Those little ticks ride on anything. We travel with our pets nowadays, and it's just it's impossible to avoid. So being in the Northeast, having been bit when I was a child and not knowing what it was because nobody really knew it was very early on. It was in the 80s and there wasn't a lot of information. There was just a strange little cluster of children in a town called Lyme, Connecticut, who had strange rheumatoid arthritis. And that's how they all presented. And then this, over time, this constellation of illnesses has evolved um, and changed. And we've seen a lot of that currently with the current situation in the world and the illnesses that are going on and how things change and evolve over time and how bodies adapt and how no two people respond the same way. So it took a very long time of trial and error and a huge portion of my life believing that I was actually just a sight case. This was all in my head and I was making it up and my symptoms had to be made up because they couldn't possibly be real. Um, and it took a lot of turning over stones and being persistent and courageous and trying new things until I finally got answers that made sense. And a lot of it was doing research on my own. And you, you know, you just brought me back into the thought of when I was a kid and we were next to wooded areas. Um, I lived in Florida, I've lived in Texas, I've mm. lived in Wisconsin, a little bit of everywhere. And yeah. um, you heard about a tick and the first thing you think is, oh, okay, so you get a, a match and you, you know, have it back it out of your skin. But that's not even close to what it actually oh. can do to you. Like you said, it travels on, on, on our pets. But thinking about going hiking, we don't think about catching a tick on our clothes, bringing it home and traveling, like you said. You were talking about the research and the things that you have had to deal with. What illnesses were going on that you realized that were not normal so that it came down to this research and understanding mm -hmm. that you had Lyme disease? Right, so I believe I was first bit when I was around 11 years old. And after that time, and I used functional medicine to help me figure this out, and functional medicine and takes the principle of looking for the root cause. So it took me back in time and we made a timeline of my history of any time I could have possibly been exposed to figure this all out. So this is all hindsight, but we believe I was first bitten when I was around 11 and I had a strange rash. From that time on, I became a sickly child and I developed allergies and intolerances to things that I'd never been allergic to before. I developed childhood asthma. I started getting infections on a regular basis, infections that required antibiotics. And this is a big clue. I would be put on antibiotics for strep throat or for something that required an antibiotic and feel better right away and feel better than better, not knowing that I actually had other things going on in my body that was making me feel ill as a child because you really don't know. I didn't have enough life experience to know my body at that point. So there's this pattern going on where I kept getting chronically ill and then was being treated with antibiotics and felt better. So time after time, I had further exposures because I was a child that was athletic and lived outside and did everything that you wanted to do. I had, a, I had a really great life not knowing I'd already had this one exposure. So I probably multiplied my infections over time and believe I was bitten again when I was in my early 20s. Um, I, in downtown Hartford, Connecticut, of all places, there's an outdoor theater where I went to a concert and sat in the lawn with my friends. And I lived alone at the time and I had a bump on the top of my head and I remember digging at it, not knowing ever what it really was. But at the same time, I did pull something out and then I let it go. About six weeks to the day later, I had been traveling overseas and I was the only one that got sick. This was mm. not flu season and I came down with the worst flu of my life. And so all these things kind of added together. And when I got back to the States, they put me on, they told me I had strep throat, bronchitis, a double ear infection, laryngitis, like everything you could possibly have all at once that was viral and, and, and bacterial. So they threw antivirals, they threw prednisone at me, they threw all sorts of stuff that just messed me up and I was never the same again after that. And so that really led me to wonder what was going on because then I started to have psychological symptoms. Things started creeping into my brain. My thought patterns were changing. I wasn't the same person that I used to be. And it was about the same time I met my husband. So he saw the best of me before I fell. And um, so he can, he can attest that I used to be a very, very active individual. And it took, it took putting all this together and then finding 
the right people that recognized what it was and were able to put all these things together because I presented at the time like I had multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, and early onset Alzheimer's. I couldn't remember anything. I had a tremor that was so bad I dropped everything. And I had a foot drag and numbness down the side of my body and the whole right side of my face was paralyzed for over a year. Oh my it word. took a chiropractor, a naturopath, nine neurologists telling me I was insane, a couple of psychiatrists, and a bunch of really, really not well-trained um, infectious disease doctors telling me that it had to be something else. Finally figure out what this was. And it was a naturopath and a chiropractor who recognized it and had some experience and knew of a specialist and got me sent in the right direction and essentially saved my life because I was heading in a really bad direction. After being told it was all in my head, I was treated for psychiatric illness and didn't respond to any of that. It made things worse. So that okay, was another so, red flag. See, so, Yeah, so you're talking about the psychological part. What about the physical part? Because the uh, monster the inside you part. can also be the outside too. Absolutely, absolutely. And I experienced extreme, extreme pieces of that. I became very obese, was unable to lose the weight. Then I became extremely thin and was unable to keep weight on. It attacked my thyroid. It attacked all the systems in my body, except for my heart that we know of. Um, that's the one area that was spared. I have some circulatory issues, but all other systems were attacked by the illness. And it presented as pain. I was no longer able to the things that I was able to do before. I was running 5Ks before it finally got to the point where my body couldn't take anymore. Mm -hmm. And when I couldn't take anymore was actually when I began treatment to fix this. I was so, so, so sick that I ended up on IV antibiotics right away. And um, my hair fell out from being on an IV for so long. I became malnourished and I ended up on a feeding tube and I almost died three times in the process of getting well after finding out what it actually was. Um, so it, it did a lot. It changed everything about me physically, emotionally, spiritually, um, the way I look at life, the way I approach things. It stole my career. It changed absolutely everything. So this film gave, gave me an opportunity to be something again. It came along at a time in my life when I had no purpose at any, any longer. I was at rock bottom and being part of the film actually saved my life. I agreed to participate in it on a fluke. It was a Facebook invite for couples who had survived Lyme disease because not only do I have it, but my husband and he's in the film has it. The entire family does. I gave it to my children. Even our dog at the time had it um, when they did the filming of the, of, of the, the first cut. And um, it was just an amazing connection, how everything kind of came together. And it, it did. Making a movie, I can say, gave me a reason to fight and it gave me a bigger purpose because I knew I was gonna have a larger audience to reach and share that story. I love that you just, I didn't know that that was your guys' connection, you being in Connecticut yeah. and, and them being here. I had no idea that it was a Facebook, that powerful yeah. um, social media platform and it yep. you know, depends on who's seeing it and at the right time. And yeah, really, so it was in 2016. Got, so you got me here when you said it was a Facebook, obviously two different sides of the continent, but sharing a similar story, not the exact same story because no one has the exact same story, but the journey of the, the frustration and the different things that you just mentioned, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. You had mentioned not having a purpose and I, I get sad on that because I think we're all going through life thinking we're going to race and chase this dream or we're gonna run and chase this whatever and then sometimes we're like, why am I doing that? or the relationships that we, we get into um, professionally and personally, and you're like, where does this all come together? And here, that relationship came with you being on different sides of the continent, and your families had been affected by the same thing, that these people are like, we need to do something about this. So when I ask about the purpose, was the purpose not just the audience part that you shared, but the ex not and the experience, but the education of something that we don't hear about. We just go Lyme disease. Well, what's Lyme disease? I didn't know it was a city in, in the United yeah. States. Exactly, exactly. It was. It was. It was deeper. It was. It's that validation factor that you have something and somebody else has the same thing and you're not going through it alone, even though you feel like you are. And you're right. We're on two separate sides of the continent. But our stories are 
Very different, yet very parallel. And that that alone was enough to create a relationship. And it was a relationship that went further than us participating in the movie. It drove me to become part of the production and of the movie itself. And consequently, I've developed two wonderful friends. Like they're they're both they're my best friends now, um, yeah. Tony and Francis. And we talk as often as we can. And I can't wait to visit them again. So that's why I call Arizona my home away from home. My literal biological family lives there, but my my film family lives there too. So here's another part of all of this. Um, I don't know if this would be the right question to ask, but I'm going to anyways. Give us an idea of your worst day in this journey. Oh, goodness, yes. My worst day in this journey. You know, there's a lot of blackout days, too. You get some, some chronic illness amnesia that comes with this, too. And so I've been told that my worst day um, really was probably... Actually, I was conscious for that one. It was the day that my son asked me if my husband and I were going to get divorced. Oh. Um, it, it really, at that point, my husband had not yet been diagnosed with Lyme. So he was not walking the same journey I was walking. He was my caretaker at that point. The kids had both been diagnosed, but I was the sickest. And to hear my son be so concerned because there was so much conflict between my husband and I that he thought we were gonna split up. It just, it snapped, it changed things in me. And that was my lowest point. That's when I decided that I had to get better no matter what, and nothing was going to stop me. And then a little bit later on, it really wasn't that much longer. My husband was diagnosed and experienced what it was like to go through treatment and that feeling worse before you feel better. And that unified us as a team. So it took that dark moment and it shined a bright light on it and showed our boys that we were able to overcome things and we were able to really put our hearts into understanding what each other's going through and trying to understand even if it's not exactly the same. I like the unity that you just spoke about. And the one thing that um, I heard you say that I've actually had happen with a couple of other guests that I've had on the show is, um, we're all going to have conflict. We're all going to have something we're not going to understand in relationships. It's, it's tough, but we have to have relationships, however you want to look at them. And the one thing is you said he was your caretaker, but in fact now you became a unity be being that you took care of each other on this same journey. And I think what I heard your son saying is, oh my gosh, this is getting difficult because people easily say, this is too hard for me. I don't know how to do it. I'm out of here. So then we think the worst, that people are going to break up, go their own ways. And in fact, this actually turned things around to have that unity that you guys were needing because I call it the me too factor. Um, yeah. So that's really a great thing to have. So now you said he was diagnosed with it as well. What, how, did, how did that come about after him <laughs> being in your life for so long and then not recognizing that he may have had it too? Right. Well, it was, this is a really kind of a neat story. We were at one, I, I wasn't actually there, but he was at one of the children's follow-up appointments when the boys were getting treated. We couldn't afford to see the same physicians. It's outrageously expensive to treat this illness once you find out what it is, because it's not covered by insurance or recognized by them. Um, so we had to take them to different specialists. So my husband was there with them and he happened to be sitting in the waiting room reading Men's Health. And in the corner was a little teeny tiny article that said, Lyme disease, are you feeling fatigued? Are you having trouble waking up in the morning? You know, and a couple other just random everyday symptoms. And then it just said, you know, you might want to consider getting checked for Lyme disease. This could be the reason. So he... When he went in with the boys for their follow-up, he asked the doctor, he said, what are the chances that maybe I have it too? You know, I do have these symptoms. There's this little message in the corner, or, you know, the wife has it. We don't know if it can be passed between partners. We know she gave it to the boys, but science isn't there yet. So what, what are the chances? He goes, roll up your sleeve because I see it in families all the time. So he did. And the irony is he's the only one that came back literally CDC positive by the book for Lyme disease, which is hard to get a, a legit test that says that you're seriously sick with it. So he had that plus four other infections oh and didn't even goodness. know it. Because he's a firefighter, as you see in the film, and he's a shift worker. So we, and he has sleep apnea, which 
is actually constructive. It's not, it's something he's had his whole life. It's the way his throat's built. And so we just assumed it was all related to lifestyle factors that were contributing to his symptoms, which were mostly sleep disturbance and feeling fatigued and unable to lose weight. Um, but ironically, it ended up being that it was the illness in itself. So he began the treatment and we became a united front as a force. And so we're a family of four who advocate for this disease high and low and every, every chance we get. I love that. I love that. Before I ask my final question, when you said advocate, more than the movie, where, where is this at? More than the movie. We've even worked here in the state of Connecticut and gone before the legislature to get them to actually recognize May officially as Lyme Disease Awareness Month. Here in the state where it was actually first noticed, it wasn't officially recognized. So it took three years and going up and working with our uh, state representative and testifying in a wheelchair that day before the before the board to get this thing passed. But we got it officially recognized, a zero dollar budget bill. But we made a little bit of a difference here. So we've had something we can say that we've left behind in the state and hopefully more in the future. So this might be a, an ignorant question, so forgive me. Is there a cure and are you cured or a remission? What is it? There is no official cure for this at this point. It's a, called remission, and it's a matter of you're not when you're not treating your tick-borne illness symptoms for um, more than three months continuously. So I've been in remission from tick-borne disease for almost four years now, I'm proud to say. Um, I still get flares and little things from time to time, and there's little hiccups and little maintenance things that have to be taken care of, but I'm in the healing process. My boys have been in remission for seven years, and my husband's been in remission for five, so it's possible to tame all these things and get back to life, and that's where I am. I'm in the process of re-entering life again. I love it. <laughs> Welcome to your life. Thank <laughs> the you. The healing so journey excited. of your life. That's right. And then get to be an advocate to educate other people, as we are doing right here. Um, yeah. Thank you for that. And um, throughout the screen, or excuse me, throughout the recording, they have given the uh, information as to where other people can find more information and even ask questions uh, more about Lyme disease. Do you have brochures and stuff like that? If someone says, hey, can you mail something to me? I do not have specific ones, but I have digital contacts that I can send people to that have superior information that are backed by one of the organizations I volunteer for. Perfect. Yep. As long as there's information, that's what this is all there about. There is. You got it. Wonderful. Um, so my final question is this. If I only had one question to ask an individual to find out what I think they are all about or who they are, it would be, what message would you like to leave everyone based on your journey of life? Wow, that is a very, very deep question. And I have to say, I think it comes back to my favorite four letter word that we both share so deeply and that's hope. Never, ever, ever lose hope and trust your gut because if there's something that's going on inside of you and you know it's not right, there's a reason for it. And you have to be acutely aware of who you are and determined to find out what that answer is. And it's out there if you have hope and don't give up. I kind of like that word. <laughs> being that it's part of my show, because we all are looking for hope at different parts of our lives, different situations that happen, um, but there's always that word hope. It's such a small word with such a big meaning, along with the word inspire, wouldn't you agree? 100%, yes. Is there anything I did not ask that maybe you wanted to share before we go ahead and come to a close? Um, no, I just, can I share where people can watch The Monster Inside Me if they're interested? Yes, please. Fantastic. Um, we have it available for streaming. You can rent it or you can buy it and own it permanently so you can watch it over and over again. Um, and that's available at themonsterinsideme.com. It's our website. We also have DVDs for sale that you can purchase directly through our website as well. And then you can own the copy if you still have a DVD player. And it's a great way to pass the message around and share it with others. 
So, um, yeah, and that's, that's really it. And just learn every little bump on your body so that you know if you've been exposed to a tick that if something's not right, make sure that you look and check and see what it is because it's so important to know what it is. There's two things I believe in. Follow your heart because it's, it knows best. And then the other part is pay attention to your body. It's mm -hmm. telling you something, yeah. It is, absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you for being my guest today, all the way from Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Christine. It's been my honor and pleasure to be on your show. Thank you so much for yeah. helping me spread the word. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing to spread the word on something that we don't really know too much about um, because it doesn't get talked about as much as cancer does. Exactly. Hopefully that'll change in my lifetime. That's my goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for being my guest today. Thank you. I want to thank my studio sponsor, the Motivated Buying Group, based right here in downtown Chandler, your global creative agency. And if you want to follow and subscribe to catch more stories of hope, please do so. If you have a story that you want to help someone on their journey, please email me to the address of stories at christinehotchkiss.com. And if you'd like to be a sponsor, you may also email me to the address of stories at christinehotchkiss.com. Until next time, everyone, I wish you well, and you take care. <music>